Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Reem and I'm an international pharmacy graduate who is currently working as a clinical pharmacist. Um, so I wanted to make this video to share um, the exact steps to become a licensed pharmacist. So the first step is that you need to take the TOEFL exam. So the NABP requires you to take the TOEFL exam here in the United States or North America or sorry, Canada. Um, so it, it cannot be done um, anywhere else in the world and also it cannot be remotely proctored. It means it has to be at an actual testing center. So that is the first step um, to start this process. And then you can start by submitting your documentation through their portal. Um, they have, um, uh, now it's online. When I started the process actually was, um, it was all paper. I had to um, take the documentation and actually mail it to the NABP along with the um, my credentials. Um, so you start by filling out the online application. You also submit your um, education to the ACE, which they are required to authenticate your degree and also um, give you an equivalency. Um, so basically they look at your coursework and um, your degree, and then they would provide, um, they would, um, give you like an equivalency degree based on um, what they, they acquire here in the United States. So there's that step as well, and it does require you to, to contact your pharmacy school um, to fill out certain paperwork, and then they would have to mail that to the ECE. There's also documentation that is required uh, from the Board of Pharmacy in the country where you graduated. Um, so you would need to provide like um, some sort of either uh, updated pharmacy license from that country that it says that you are unrestricted to practice pharmacy. Um, so there's that document. And then after you fill out all the documentations and you send them to the NABP, um, they take um, I can't remember the processing time. I want to say maybe it was about two to three months for them to process the whole documents that they have received and then they will give you the authorization to um, test. So they have just recently, I want to say last year or over the last two years, they have changed the eligibility to set for the FPGE um, is that now you'll need to pass the TOEFL before you can actually apply to sit for the FPGE. So make sure that before you start anything is that you need to uh, pass or get that passing score in the TOEFL and that's my advice is to get it first and then start your documentation um, uh, evaluation process and then after that you'll be able to apply to sit for the FPGE. So now uh, the FPGE only takes place once a year and that's in October and it's also only in the United States so you do have to come in, in person to sit for that test so it cannot be done remote and they don't have other testing sites outside of the state. Um, so after you pass your TOEFL, you will receive a certificate from the NABP, which is known as the FPGE C certificate, which essentially says that um, the degree that you have, and after passing those, the TOEFL and the FEBG exam, you are now um, equal to somebody who graduated from pharmacy school, from an ACPE accredited pharmacy school. After that, it depends. It depends on which state you go to. Some states will allow you to start your internship hour. Um, sorry, internship hours uh, before you get the actual FPGE C certificate. Some states do not allow you to do that. You will need to get that certificate first, apply for intern license, and then you can start your fifteen hundred hours. The other thing. Um, is that also it, it varies by states. Um, some states have a cap for the amount of hours that you can complete 
each week. So some would limit you to 40 hours a week and some do not have a limit. I think in California, they don't have a limit of the amount of hours or the number of hours that you can actually complete per week. Um, so you can choose to practice at or complete those hours at different sites. Like you can go to different pharmacies and different hospitals hospitals and that way you do not exceed um, you do not exceed the eight hour per day um, work schedule so there's that as well um, and then um, after you complete the 1500 hours and I think Washington State um, does not require you to complete for 1500 hours it actually depends on your your FEBG score so if you're if FEBG score is high, then you would you will be required to do less number of um, internship hours. So that is, I think, it's fantastic. And then the next two steps, which are the NAPLEX and the MPJE. So for the NAPLEX, um, I think Texas uh, is one of the are is one of the states that allows you to take the NAPLEX while you're, while you're completing the 1500 hours. Other states require you to finish the whole 15 hours like in California, and then you'll be able to apply for the NAPLEX. Um, so once you pass the NAPLEX, you'll be able to sit uh, for the MPJE. Um, I think you can do the NAPLEX and the MPGE at the same time. I don't think you have to wait for one or the other. Uh, but also the last step would be to complete the or pass the MPGE. Um, and um, there are no additional exams because I remember in New York State and also Georgia had wet lab, which is like a practical exam that you need to take, but now they have waived it. Um, so they none of the applicants are required to complete that and I think that happened after COVID. Um, so that's pretty much in a nutshell. So just to recap what we talked about, the first step is I recommend that you start by taking the TOEFL and obtaining that required score. And after that, submit your application to the NABP uh, for document evaluation. And at the same time, you submit your documentation to ECE, which is um, the governing body for evaluating your credentials and providing an equivalency. And then after that, you'll be able to obtain your ATTE, your um, ATT to sit for the FEBG. And after you pass the FEBG, you'll be able to start your 1500 hours and then pass the NAPLEX and then finally the MPJE. Um, so good luck in your journey and please feel free to reach out if you have any comments or questions. I'll be happy to answer um, to the best of my ability. Um, thank you for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.